Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Martina. Now, I know y'all are looking at my head like, what's up with the hair? I know she didn't grow all that hair overnight. Um, if you're wondering how I have managed to get this cute little uh, Afro puff ponytail, I can tell you that I have basically manipulated my lace front wig Drew into this, uh, into this hairstyle. So, I actually have someone, I forgot her name, but I'm going to put it below. Like, I'm going to put it right here on the screen. So this YouTuber, she actually sent me a question last week asking if, I, um, if I'd ever worn Drew up into any kind of puff or whatnot. And prior to that, I never thought about actually trying to put Drew up. I, I really usually do not put wigs up um, and wear them out in public in any kind of a ponytail, publicly anyway, simply because usually the back part of the wig, it always looks, you, it just never looks real when you put it up. You can obviously look at the back of someone's head if they're not wearing a full lace wig anyway. And you can look and you can see, okay, you're wearing a wig. So that's why I never go out the house like that. Um, but this time I thought, you know, maybe there's got to be some kind of way I can manipulate it and pull it off and make it cute enough to wear out of the house. So I figured out how to do that and this is the outcome. And I've actually worn this out, this style out a couple times, just, you know, maybe even, I think it was actually three times this past week. And I love it. Um, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to do this style if you're moving quickly. So, and it's not really hard to do. All you're going to need is some bobby pins. You're going to need a, um, like a, like a nylon pantyhose or a cut-up nylon pantyhose. And you're going to need, of course, some of these handy-dandy claw clips to basically, you know, help keep the hair out of the way. And, uh, maybe it's a little bit of Eco Styler gel. And you're good to go. So I'm going to show you all how I achieved this look in just a second. But let me go ahead and show you just a, a full turn here so you can get a, a grasp of the whole look I'm going for here. Okay, this is the side, obviously. The front, showing you all far back so you can see how massive that puff is. The top part, and I have a cute little headband that I got from the icing. The left. And this is what it looks like up close, if you can see. The side, the back, it looks real, right? Like if I saw this, I wouldn't even think that it was a wig. And I'm good at, you know, determining wigs. If you so. want to know how I achieved this look, stay tuned. And I'll help you figure it out, okay? Stay tuned. Okay, basically right now, um, I obviously have most of my hair put up under a wig cap. And you're probably wondering, like, why do you have, <laughs> why do you have this extra hair out around the perimeter looking like Krusty the Clown? I'm going to tell you why. I figured a lot of reasons why I do not like to wear wigs up is because I feel like um, they just don't look realistic, the back anyway. Even if you have a lace front, a lot of times they don't come with lace on the back. And Drew does not have lace on the back, by the way. So I feel like when you put the wigs up in a ponytail, it just looks weird to me. It looks really wiggy. So I never tried it. But um, like I told you, I did try it a couple days ago, and I have a solution to uh, make it look less wiggy, and that's why I have this hair. Basically, I left um, a little bit of hair out, you know, my little, um, I guess my little sideburn here right here not really a sideburn but little um, edges right here and then I left some hair out all around the perimeter now I don't have a huge amount of hair out right now but it's enough to basically be able to put on the wig and use that to kind of camouflage the back of the wig and I'm going to show you that next um, basically the first thing I'm going to do is <laughs> I just got out of the shower like 30 minutes ago so my hair is a little bit wet Actually, it's starting to dry pretty much, but it's just a little bit wet right now. Um, I don't have any product in it. I have not touched it or anything, so this is just how it has decided to uh, to dry today. But I'm going to go ahead and wet it a little bit more and put some hair gel in it just to kind of give it a little more, um, to weigh it down a little bit so hopefully it won't shrink up as much. So let me go ahead and spray my little water on it really quickly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do for the hair that I've left out is just apply a little bit of the uh, Kinky Curly Not Today um, Leave-In Detangler. Alright, and I'm just going to be putting a little bit of that on the hair. As you can see, just kind of working it through the hair. And 
if you're curious what the rest of my hair looks like up under this wig cap, it's still straight because um, if y'all remember, I flat ironed it like last week. So the rest of my hair is still straight. I haven't wet or washed that yet. I'm probably going to wash it tomorrow. But um, yeah, so that's why it's still under the wig cap and that's why it's able to lay so flat is because it's still flat ironed from last week when I flat ironed it. I just took this hair out and just, you know, washed it and whatnot for this specific hairstyle that I'm trying to achieve today. Okay, so now I have that on there, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of Eco Style Gel on that hair really quickly here. Ooh. And usually when I do my wash and goes, um, I do use these products, but I also use a few other ones. So this is not my typical wash and go um, when I'm defining my curls. This is not typically how I do it, but just for this style, uh, this is what I've chosen to do. Make sure it's evenly distributed, kind of. There's always that one little patch in the pack that I, that I don't get or whatever. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's even. I'm going to add a little bit on these edges over here. Yeah, I hate that. It gets a little too weight down on the looser textures up front. But anyway, it always shrinks on back up. Good old shrinkage. So yeah, I think this is good. For now, anyway. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to move on to actually applying the wig, which is I'm sure what, all you, what you all actually wanted to see, not me. Uh, moisturizing and <laughs> gelling up my, my hair and neck. Anywho, sorry about that. I'm putting the top back on. Alright, well, let's get right to it. Um, if you notice, I already have the wig. It was kind of already like puffed already from the other day or yesterday when I wore it. So I'm going to take this out. And what I'll be using today to make my puff is basically the usual uh, item. It is a cut off piece of uh, pantyhose. And a lot of people use these instead of any kind of headband or anything because they're really stretchy. And especially if you're doing this to your real hair, they're good with protecting it and not really damaging it. So. A lot of people just cut, um, you see, it's just a cut nylon pantyhose. Alrighty, so the first thing you want to do, or the first thing that I do when I put on my, uh, my wig, so I usually just slide it onto my forehead first, like this, if you can see that. You can't see. Ugh. And then once it's on my forehead like this, I pull it on back to the back of my head. And you don't want to, when you pull it back, don't cover your curls. Just pull it back and stop right above the spot where your curls are. Like, this is my natural hair. I want to stop right above that, okay? Then you want to make sure you don't have the wig on crooked. <laughs> so you check to make sure that the ears on the side, like they have a little cutout part for your ears. Make sure they're lined up on uh, both sides properly. Then you want to pull the, cap, the wig down to kind of fit snugly to your head. Once you do that, or you want to um, hold the front and just pull the wig back to your natural hairline, which that's where I do it. I don't ever leave it on my forehead. I literally pull it back. My natural hairline is about right there. That's where my wig is going to be, okay? That's how you get it to look the most realistic. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to just clip it up for the next step. And the next step is going to be to secure the edges, which is a lot of you all have been um, asking me questions about how I do this. And I'm going to show you now. You're going to need some bobby pins for this part. Now, I normally do not leave my edges out at all, but because I'm going to be pulling this wig back, it's going to have to sit back a little further on the edges. So that's why I have these out. Plus, I kind of mix my little curls, so I wanted to have them out anyway, and I think it looks cute. So, for this particular style, I have left out the little edges right there. Everything else is back. Like, none of this is my hair. I'm going to clip this hair over to the side and get to work. You want to pull your edges back, put the lace wig down where you need it to fall, and just use a bobby pin. 
and this is how I do it. I don't pin at the hairline because that's you can see that, that's obvious. What I do is I go into the wig and I pin just behind the actual lace. There are, um, I guess, the, the little net area that the wig or the weft are sewn onto. That's what you want to pin. You don't want to actually pin through the lace because you'll rip it. So go just beyond the lace and just pin this wig down into your wig cap. Now it's going to puncture your wig cap, wig cap, but I mean I've had this wig cap for a while and it hasn't really, it's ripped a little bit, but for the most part it's still going strong. So um, yeah, and you can see that already. I mean here's the lace or whatever and I mean it's, it's snug on there. I usually put two on each side, one lower down and then one like higher up. I think that one was kind of like medium range, so I'm going to go a little lower with this second pin. I'm going to pin it kind of behind the ear area. There we go. And as you can see, I mean, it's pinned down and I didn't have to resort to using the clips that come inside the wig. And that's how I do it. And I'm just going to repeat that step on the other side. Um, but like I said before, you want to start a little lower down. Oh, this hair is tangly. Okay, and then clip it, clip the wig up and as well, clip the hair up and out of your way. You want to smooth your own hair down and pull it back so it's not sticking out of the wig, like so. Hold the wig down. And then you want to pin it. And like I said, the first pin, you want to have that kind of lower, almost uh, behind the ear area, kind of. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but that's kind of the general area that I go to. Now, this side is still kind of loose, so I might, I, know, I might have to resort to using three pins. We'll see. And like I said, remember, you do not want to puncture the lace. You do it behind the lace, okay? Because if you rip that lace, you're going to have a problem. I mean, I've ripped the lace on one of my wigs and I still use it, but I have to be very delicate with it because I know any day now, I mean, if I'm too hard on it, it could uh, rip all the way and it won't be usable. So, you have to be really careful with that lace. Okay, you can see here the um, lace is still kind of sticking up, so I want to do my next pin over in this area. And I want to do it once again right behind the uh, lace. And you just stick it in, stick it in through the wig cap, and on into your real hair. And as of right now, I think that's looking pretty decent, I would say. I mean, my hair is all pulled back. There may be a little piece actually right here that's still out, but um, you can't always get it perfect. So I think for today, I'm just going to leave it like that. Ordinarily, if I wanted it to like literally have no hair out, I could fix that. But today, I don't really care. I'm not being as picky. Okay. okay, and then for the uh, next part, you want to, since you're going to be, like, I don't normally do this if I'm just wearing the hair down and whatnot, but if you're going to be wearing the hair in a uh, ponytail, the next part you want to do is secure it in here. Because when you pull it back, you don't want your wig to slide back. So, it's important that you pin it in the top as well. And you just want to get behind that waist once again and uh, pin it down. Maybe use like two or three, like one in the middle and one more so over here. And make sure your hair is out of the way because you don't want to pin the hair down. You just want to pin the, uh, I guess you would call the scalp or the wefts or whatever you want to call it down. You don't want to actually pin the hair. Okay. I'm going to work down again then. Okay. And I'm going to do one more on the left hand side. And like I just told you all, this is not, I don't pin the top every day. I'm just pinning the top today since I'm wearing it pulled back in a ponytail and I don't want it to slide. 